Hey guys, welcome back. Got a project for today. 95 Ford F-250. It's got the legendary 7.3 Power Stroke diesel engine. Anyway, it's got a little noise in the front end, so we need to, need to figure out what's going on. Now this truck is quite a rarity in my area. It's two-wheel drive. So anyway, I thought maybe tire wear because the, you know, this Ford twin high beam suspension, it's pretty notorious for wearing out tires, but that's not the problem. Everybody hear that? She don't sound too good. Alright, can everybody see that? Looks like we got miles of pad left. So, I think somebody just put brakes on this pretty recently. Okay, there she be. Well, they weren't too tight. <laughs> that looks nice. It's definitely gotten hot.
Not too good. Okay, our rotor is clean and dry. Got our new bearings here from Napa. I'm going to use my Brian Block approved bearing drivers. Someday I'll buy a real bearing driver set, but <laughs> it's never got around to it. Probably not the best choice. This is a plug that I made one time for a job. Like it, it went on top of a bearing to keep it from being covered with powder coating when the when an assembly was powder coated. So now it's got like 20 layers of powder coating on it. Set that to the side. We'll bring in the tub o grease. That'll work. All right, time for the seal. Standard warning. Don't forget to put the, the uh, bearing in first. Again, not that I know. Okie doke. Okay, the spindle's all cleaned up, so we might as well put it back together. And you won't be able to see it on the camera, but right there is a Ford logo on this rotor, so I think there's at least a small chance that these are actually the original rotors, which is a little bit scary. So lots of controversy about how much grease to put in these, you know, tapered roller bearings when you pack them. Personally, my opinion is whatever grease is in the bearing is all it needs. You saw when we pulled the thing apart, the whole cavity was jam-packed full of grease and didn't help that bearing one bit. So the grease won't go anywhere until the hub gets hot. And usually the only part that gets really warm is right next to the bearing anyway. So if you pack the full the whole center full of grease, it, it won't do anything. The only exception might be if you have a boat trailer that gets submerged in water. Sometimes it's best to fill those all the way up with grease just so the water has nowhere to get in. So my standard wheel bearing setup procedure tight to make sure everything is seated. Back it off and then just finger tight. Should be able to feel just a tiny bit of end play. That's a little too much. Like that.
also seems to be lots of controversy on the internet about anti-seize on wheel studs. So personally, I do use anti-seize on these wheel studs if they're not coated. If they're plated, usually there's no need for it. And then I like to put some anti-seize right there at the at the hub pilot, just because that's where the rims always get rusted on. And I guess we had to look at some of these oil leaks. So that's the oil pan right there on the engine. And it's definitely leaking out of the dipstick. So I don't know if it's leaking where this bulkhead fitting goes through the pan or if it's leaking where the dipstick goes into that. But probably need to research some, some new O-rings for that. And then the whole pan, back of the pan's pretty nasty. So I don't know if it's got a bad valve cover leak or something. Who knows? Yeah, this freaking oil filter. I cannot get it to seal. I don't know how you guys are with your 7.3s, but I've had terrible luck with these motorcraft filters. They don't want to seal up. So I had the oil cooler out, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. Maybe it was a month ago. The O-rings were all broken and brittle. So I had to take that pedestal off, but I cannot get the oil filter to seal back up since I did that. I'm going to go to Napa and get a Wix filter and throw this motorcraft in the trash. Okay folks, pretty exciting, huh? Here's our old bearing race. And yeah, she's smoked. So part of inspecting bearings involves your ears, you know, and if you hear that kind of crunchy sound, then the bearing is shot. You could probably repack that with grease and you might get away with it for, for a short amount of time, but it's going to get hot again and you'll be right back where you started. So the bearings are cheap. All the parts to do this was about $40, so nothing to it. I don't even know if I'm going to post this video. I mean, <laughs> how exciting is it to watch a guy replace a wheel bearing on a on a 24-year-old truck? I don't know. Anyway, pretty simple job. So there are some tools that will make the job a little bit easier. These are dust cap pliers. These ones just happen to be snap-on, but there is a... a several alternatives that are quite a bit cheaper and then I love these little Mayhew flat ladyfoot pry bars for for pulling seals fantastic and then these are cool these are these are just hooks for hanging calipers and I learned about those from the from the South Main Auto Channel and you know of course you could make something like this but you can buy them on Amazon for like two dollars a piece so that's what I do anyway I'll throw some links down below if and you want to buy some of this stuff. Yeah, we'll move on to the next one. Thanks for watching. I'll give you guys a little tip. If you don't know what engine your old Ford truck has, just pop open the glove box. We'll take a look inside. Hmm, one cam sensor. Two cam sensors. What's this? Looks like a box for a third cam sensor. Yep, definitely a 7.3 power stroke. 